Hello, Reese from the Point Music Podcast thingy. This has been like the third take of me getting this right. Um, another podcast for you, as per normal for me right now. Um, had big chats, massive chats actually, with Zach and Nick from Patient Lounge, a Brisbane progressive band. Um, I've actually been following them for, I think, three years now. They were called another band when one of my bands played with them, but we won't mention the name because it's we don't need to. Patient Lounge, they've actually brought out a new single called um, Begda, or B-E-G-D-A, um, which if you're a musician, you'd probably get that. Uh, great song. It's fucking nearly nine minutes long, but it's sick. So do check that out. I'll put the link in. But in the meantime, jump into this uh, podcast with Zach and Nick from Patient Lounge and enjoy. Zach and Nick from Patient Lounge. How are we? Right, mate. How are you doing? I'm good. How's Brisbane treating you on this? Is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday afternoon, evening. Pretty good. It's nice. There's no lockdown. We no. can do whatever the fuck we it's want. No, no COVID, cootie, corona, re- no, things. No, it's yeah. Awesome. Right. Let's get straight to it. You guys are getting a new single out. Yeah, we do. Now, do I say it as it's like phonetically? Do I go begged or is it B E G D A? No, that's it. You did it. You nailed it. You nailed, you nailed it. it. On your ease. Well, which one? Begda. Oh, Begda. Oh, Begda. Yeah, that's... All right. Because I thought you guys were doing like a powder finger thing when basically using the B-E-G-D-A chord progression and naming it as a song. That's exactly what we did. I didn't even know powder finger <laughs> did that. D-A-F. <laughs> off off um, Double Logic, oh, the second album. Of course. Yep. I told you I'm Gen X. I'm old, man. I was just <laughs> straight off the bat. First thing I You're thought You're only of. the second person so far to, uh, to call us out on that. Really? Yeah. Why? Everyone just thinks it's Begda. Yeah, everyone just thinks it's a weird noise, yeah, I guess. Accepts it. Accepts, accepts yeah, the yeah. name. Yeah. It's capitalized. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. I think it's pretty obvious. But yeah. That's what's going on. And I was jamming with it a little bit earlier, like with some synth and that sort of stuff. I just making sure I was correct with the chord progression. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did the you big. work it out? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I mean, I literally, like, dude, it's an eight minute song. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the, why that's really geeky in a second but um yeah first things first it's um very cool song i've always in, admired the sort of the proggy sort of elements that you guys have like um there's not many of of uh of the prog elements in brisbane much anymore um i don't know if you yeah, guys cool. agree with yeah. that yeah no it doesn't seem like it man um oh, there's a, a great they're super prog. Ferran um, are the first band that come to mind when I think of a local prog band. Um, but there's, there's not heaps of it. Um, and I, didn't, I didn't really know if there was one, anyone who digged it in Brisbane. But yeah, people man, Deadly Circus song, so. Brisbane, dude. That was a massive prog. Yeah, that's, a good point. that's a good point. I mean, Flynn yeah. Effect were originally from Brisbane in a sense, and they're, but they're industrial prog in a sense. And then they fucked, yeah. off, fucked off to Melbourne, so... Sorry, yeah, sorry yeah. to Mina, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, I feel bad for that <laughs> now, dude. She just stayed in Brisbane. Yeah, uh, I've actually teed up a podcast for her later on in, in next month or something like that. Well, you'll see Very that true. one. Yeah, yeah, because they just yeah. went single. But back to you guys. Anyway, um, so kicking around, you, it says in your bio since two thousand and what nineteen, but that's yeah, that's incorrect. I mean, you. <laughs> You were, we won't name the band that was the previous incarnation of right, Patient Lounge, right. but you guys have been around a lot longer than that, right? Yeah. I think that that gig at the back room, yeah. that was our first gig. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Right. For the listeners and that, we were just, me, me, Nick and Zach were just talking about how like I actually did a gig with them. Um, that was 2018, wasn't it? Yeah, 2018 was kind of when we started. So yeah. That's when we started yeah. um, playing. Wow. What the lineup was his patient lounge, yeah. Yeah. For the band that forever yeah. shall not be unnamed. Yeah, um, forever shall not be named. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's when you need a publicist to come in and just go, "Hey guys, um, before no, don't no, yeah. yeah, don't call yourselves <laughs> that." Oh, people tried. <laughs> they did. Tell, but we got we got told that so often, and we were just like, "What are you?" I was the main one being like, "They're being ridiculous." <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. 
don't know what they're talking about. And then eventually the weight just became too much. We had to, okay. we it was a bold yeah. move, but I, yeah, a lot. I mean, at least you didn't go through a majority of your career with that name and all of a sudden did a, like a she had turned to pacifier and then come back around. Yeah. You did it before you sort of really released anything. Yeah, that's right. And, and it was, to be honest, it, it worked out really well because we obviously we recorded some stuff under the old name. Mm. Um, and which was just like us in our bedrooms, basically. Yeah, well, it wasn't demos. Literally us in our bedrooms. Yeah. Recorded them. They, well, they were meant to be demos. And then we were like, ah, these are like pretty good for demos. Maybe we can release them. So we did. And then kind of after a couple months of them being out, we were like, actually, let's let's rebrand. Let's record these properly. Um, and drop some coin on them. Get them sounding as good as we think they can actually sound. Mm. Um and then, and then kind of start from there. So it actually worked out well, but the rebrand was like a relaunch kind of thing. And we managed to take some momentum with us and, and apply a bunch of stuff that we learned to how to do better and things to avoid and that kind of thing under the old name and, and hit the ground running this time around. So it, I'm pretty happy with it actually. For some reason, I thought you guys actually really had released an EP, but you've just released a slew of singles so far, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? Apart from money? We've, we've kind of wanted to spread it out like um what we found with when we released the, the ep before was um yeah we, if we it was really good hype and we hyped it really well but then it really died off really quickly mm. whereas if we we just really like each individual song and if we if we split them up into singles that way we it gives us the ability to put a lot of effort into each release and yeah. actually hype each release as well yeah and um yeah, it's just, it's just to be able to create hype around everything that we drop. Yeah, to be honest, I, I feel like in the, with kind of the way the music industry is at the moment with streaming and everything like that, yep. I, I don't really know what the point of, of an EP or an album is nowadays. It just, uh, it just limits the amount of social media presence you can have, and that's where fans are made. So That's correct. Know, more- yeah, uh, no, I totally agree with what you're saying. I've been, because I've been working on an album like I've actually in three bands that are all releasing albums in the next few months. And yeah. you're right. It, it's a bit of a concern with the streaming format of why bother do we mm. release an album now? But there is still the yeah. physical component. I mean, I know the main band I'm in, um, which is not this, not sort of in the same genre that we're sort of in. It's more of a reggae band. Right. Oh, cool. Uh, definitely will be releasing it on a physical format. So CD and vinyl. Because yeah. the people that listen to that music are avid vinyl collectors a lot of the time or the CD collectors. Mm. and Yeah. Whereas people more the sort of listen in the genres that we play into so the prog and the alt sort of stuff, they're, they're usually more than likely just going to you know, put in their phone and put in their playlist, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like the plan for us, we, we've got a bit of a spoiler. I've got a few more singles we're going to drop. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we might put together a physical release with some special content on it so that'd be um, cool as an album yeah yeah so it, it'll there'll still be a physical copy at some point mm. but we've just stretched it out enough so that we can we can actually just enjoy every release and have have some content to slowly drip feed yeah it's fans. it's interesting seeing this industry because the focus used to be like don't don't bother sort of hitting us up until you have an album oh we've got some singles yeah no you haven't you haven't got an album yet it's flipping yeah, yeah. the other way now well, 100%. You've got people dropping their second single and just coming out of nowhere. So Yeah, I mean, Hope D has released, I think she just released her, her EP, yeah. but she released one song, pretty good, second single, bang, exploded. I mean, Tones and I had released, I think, just Dance Monkey and then, you know, toured America or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, the whole album thing, it's... I love listening to albums. Mm. Um, I think that's almost like the right way in some respects to consume music a lot of the time yep. especially when they've written in in a long format like that and they're conceptualized at, through an album mm. but it's just not it's not the way people are consuming music i mean you'll just put on spotify and then hit shuffle right or you'll or your song will be thrown into a random playlist so as much thought as you might put into this song feeds into this song and then like like looking at the album and overall and then we'll give them a break with a soft song in the middle like not that many people are going to listen to it like that so yeah yeah it's just kind of the, the way of, the way of consumers at the moment which well, is fine it's nice the length of your songs that you've released and it, was it five or four singles is it four singles is it five no, four singles four. Four. yeah they would yeah. all equate to basically a, an album 
right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Like be- be- Begda or B E G D A is 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 what eight and a half minutes long. Yeah, think it's it's eight fifty five. I checked. So it's today, just under so nine minutes, right? Call it nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite nine. You, you do realize <laughs> most most publicists are just going, just looking at it, just going, no. do a radio edit, do a radio edit. Seriously, do a radio Wait, edit. I, please, please do a I radio got that edit. Exact feedback. I I was pitching the song to a bunch of people. So I do the band's PR as well. And um, one I can't remember if it was a label or someone replied to us and was like, "Yeah, yeah, cool song. Not even close to radio ready." <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, "Look, you're not wrong." Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what. I mean, yeah, we could take stuff out, I guess. But I think that it. We we try and make sure that the songs aren't staying longer than they're welcome if that makes sense like if it's nine minutes long Dude, hopefully it has a reason to be nine minutes long there is a reason why it's called progressive music that's, that's exactly it right. if they're expecting a two and a half minute little shanty out of you guys and then they got another thing <laughs> coming that's literally yeah, like yeah. The, the intro and like a pre-verse and that's it yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, exactly. You, you wouldn't be at the chorus by two and a half minutes. Oh so. shit, no! I don't think I was at the chorus for <laughs> two and a half minutes with with Bector. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So let's get into the song. Like, what, what actually went was the thought process behind it, um, and how do you construct it? Because I'm always interested in this sort of stuff. So, how, how nerdy do you want to get, man? Let's go nerdy, man. We're, we're talk, there's a lot of people that watch this that are actually like at home producers or. Just like music in general. And then some people just go, oh, man, musicians just talk about their own stuff. It's like, what the fuck do you expect <laughs> us to fucking talk about? Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. Yeah, go, <laughs> go down that hole, man. Go down that rubber hole. See so how we go. Uh, well, do you want to talk about the production kind of stuff? Um, I guess the writing process first. Yeah, yeah that's sure. kind of where. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the singles and stuff we've done so far, um, the actual the skeleton of the songs will come from just me and my acoustic guitar. Yep. So um, it's, yeah, like Begda, for example, um, the, the main melody and harmony that you hear in a lot of the parts, that was me just jamming by myself. Um, and then from there, we I, I bring it to Nick. Um, we arrange it into something that we're happy with. Mm-hmm. So we'll, um, and that's when we'll just take the piss and just go to as many different places as we can. Yeah. Taking a piss is a good good phrase for it. It's... Yeah, a lot of the time I don't even know like what time signature I'm writing in. I'm just doing whatever the hell comes. The organic, to, comes what to comes me. naturally, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're like, um, yeah, leave, leave it to the, the drummer to come up with the time signature, dude. Exactly, just... literally exactly what happens. He has yeah. no idea what he's doing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> it like, sounds, cool. sounds cool. Like, um, what is that? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, and then we'll go from we'll put together an arrangement and then. With Begda, um, Nick and I, because it, it's a, one of our older songs that we did. Yeah, that did we read that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's we had that process, and then from there we we brought it into the rehearsal room, and then that's where Eric came along and like literally just polished it right up, put in all these beautiful touches throughout the song, mm. and um, same as um, Tom, who was who's not with us, I'm uh, not playing anymore, but he's up in Cairns. Um, but yeah, he he just came in and just made the, just added the the base that, the the way he writes it's fucking insane. Like he just he treats the bass like it is a very key part, which it is. And so You're talking um, to a bass player here, man. So I'm just gonna go. Yes, that's the correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he's um he's, he's made the made made the bass in the stuff that we do. But one of the most important parts of what we play. Yeah, he's super melodic. Um, which is just a, it's a really, it's a massive treat for me for a drummer to play with a bassist mm. too, and to write with a bassist too, who thinks beyond, I'll just hold down, hold down the fort and, and get the groove happening. Um, he, and, and I knew bassist Lucas is exactly the same, um, really just takes liberties um, to, rhythmically and melodically, which gives me a lot to play off as a drummer. It's, it's really, really fun. So how, um, how important is the relationship between, like, I know the answer to this shit, but most people don't. <laughs> between a, a, a bass player and a drummer, if they don't gel... Uh, yeah, that's, that's... I mean, that's it. It's the glue, isn't it, man? Mm-hmm. You know you know how it is. If, if the bassist and the drummer are in the same... If they're really locked in, if they're in the pocket together, it doesn't really matter what the fuck else happens. Like, the engine room's going, yep. the song's going to sound cool, everyone else can... As far as I'm concerned, 
everyone else can play whatever they want. If if me and the bases are locked in and we're doing something tasty and 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 tight yeah. and really together, um, then yeah, it gives all the the kind of high range melodic instruments just free room free room. Yep. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. We've got this under control, which which we think about a lot. We try and think a lot rhythmically, and this is where it's going to get pretty nerdy, but um, I, I try really hard to think rhythmically about the song as a whole and kind of rhythmic motifs mm -hmm. and how we can, how the bassist and I can hint at something early in the song, hint at a weird modulation, hint at a weird time scene for a weird rhythm or whatever early in the song, and then maybe hint it again later and then kind of bring it to fruition at the end. Um, like there's a, I'm trying to think of a specific example. So this is going to get super nerdy. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, Nerds! <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the whole kind of first, I guess, two minutes of Begda um, is in 6-8. Underneath it, there's this 4-4 four, four thing happening in the hi-hat. It kind of split the 5-6-8 into 4. Mm -hmm. And that, it, it's pretty subtle because I'm the only person doing it and it's just my left foot on hi-hat, just counting out 4 underneath the 6. Yeah. Um, and But then the whole... Well, like what we call the B section of the song, the whole middle section of the song really leans into and feels like 4 4. Yeah. And I was, I was going through it during the song today and teaching someone else kind of how to play it. And it flashed me back to when I was writing it. And we had the B section, and I was like, right, this is cool, but it just has no. How is this related to the intro section? How do I make that related somehow? Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of thing is where. It's like Zach will write something super, super, super cool. And then normally Eric and I actually will really obsess over little details and trying to have some reason, some justification for all the stupid shit that we do, basically. So a musical segue, know, basically. Yeah, trying to. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a weird... Do you guys map it out, like, what what you're actually doing? Because it's such a a long sort of... Well, they're, they're long songs. So, I mean, I know, I know in Neil's and that sort of stuff, we just basically... In my mind, most of our songs just go through that standard like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus yeah. thing. But that's just a pop sort of element to it. Progressive music, prog sort of stuff is by no means anything yeah. related to that. So how do you work out where you want to go in that journey? I think that's it. I think it's, it's definitely identifying where the journey needs to go next. Yeah. If, if you feel like it hasn't come to a, a uh a point like if it's not it's m most of what we write it's building its way up the entire time um and if it hasn't hit that spot or it's it's come to it's come to a peak we it just feels like we i just got to realize what the music wants next yeah that's and it's good, it? it's um it's not really something i can explain too much but i just i just listen to it i go like where where do i want this to go i don't care if it's if like it's dual verse or it's dual chorus, I just mm -hmm. go, nah, sweet, let's check in a bass solo. Or like, <laughs> what, would, what would be um, really different here? So yeah, everyone yeah, walks away way. when the bass solo comes. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> 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 like um, so true. what it was, um, all you want, all yeah. you want, it goes. It's like intro, um, verse, bass solo, bass solo, verse. <laughs> that yeah, was the first single for you guys, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, the the bass solo it's referencing it's like the, the melody chorus, yeah. the melody yeah. that it's playing is very similar to the vocal melody and we're playing the chorus chords. So just yeah, we just we just have an idea and we go, Oh, that'd be cool and then we just we go we just trust our gut and go, Let's do that rather than trying to do what we think we should do. Yeah. And then I, I feel like afterwards then when the, the song's kind of mostly there from start to finish that's when we really start to zoom in on little details and go, okay, now how can we justify it's that? The finesse part, we, yeah. The finesse part, yeah. How can we make this a little bit more like how Carnival would write it? <laughs> you can't get into that mindset, dude, or else you're going to be sitting around <laughs> waiting for like six years to write another bloody album. Yeah, that's exactly it. Love you, yeah. Carnival guys, but yeah. Oh, wow. Was... Yeah, yeah. What's the song? It's taking forever to write. Yeah, that's, that's. I think tools sort of just basically set the thing. Yeah, this is what you normally do is just you do an album and you wait three years, five years, 13 years. Ten years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this this one, this track in particular was, was engineered by Bernie. Um, what's his name? Uh, Wedrat? 
Yeah. yeah. Is this the first time you work with him, or you work with him previously? All, all of our stuff. All your stuff's done with him. Out of Lush Studios. Yeah. Out of, um, he's a wizard. The studio is amazing. It's yeah. He's he's great, man. So are, are you um, speaking mainly to Zach with this one here, um, with your guitar stuff? Is that going through like like Camplers and XFX or anything like that, or are you actually using proper amps? Yeah, that's no, all, all real, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, there's no modeling or anything on yeah. anything in um, our, our music that we record. So it's yeah. So we've got with our guitars that we've recorded, we've recorded them at home just because we can get a pretty solid sound yep. without needing the studio room. Yep. So, yeah, we just use our libraries. So the guitars are an EVH and an Engel. Mm -hmm. um, and then the clean guitars are just Fenders, so Fender Twins. Nice. Is it using, yeah. like, 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 Logic or something like that or, like, Pro Tools? And just for... Um, for Pro Tools, yeah. yeah. And you just dump the wabs so, in there, make sure it's all matched up, and you just send it to Bernie and put it in? Yeah, pretty much. So How do, easy is that shit? Yeah, <laughs> and it's um saves two days in the studio yep. like paying for your time and you can yep. sit in um like just sit in a bedroom and make a little iso cab out of mattresses yeah <laughs> i mean i so, I, yeah. I normally go direct in with with my setup but my setup in mules is completely different to what anyone else is doing so i actually have to be yeah. making sure that the guitar and bass line are perfectly in sync otherwise it's going to have some phase issues so as long as i do oh, the bed right. as long as i do the bed tracks at the same time so the guitar and bass at the same time and then i can yep. add fluff and shit to the top i can add extra guitar tracks in there but that's the beauty of having all your stuff at home yeah and then you yeah, can go to the studio and do drums that's yeah, that's it. it. Yeah, oh, and all, all, then all the pressure's on. <laughs> this is costing a two thousand dollars a second. Don't, Don't fuck, fuck it up. up. <laughs> you got one yeah. job. Yeah. Make sure you do yeah. it right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you guys got actually basically got to launch a single at the other festival, which was on the weekend. Yeah, I was yeah, meant to go with that, but I've just started holidays and I've got four gigs on in the next two weeks with three different bands um yes. and i really didn't want to push it with my wife that much to sneak off to a festival <laughs> so, um you know, i'm not saying that she's like a or anything like that because she's not <laughs> but, like, to be fair understand. to be fair but I, i'm i'm actually a little bit bummed that i missed missed that festival because it looked i mean i love cog i heard red hook had, could not play which sucked yeah. because of the whole um poor emmy being getting the whole notification thingy yeah, but really. for you guys you guys you guys got bumped to the big stage because of that though didn't you we, we did, did. Yeah. yeah so i feel terrible for red hook but sorry, <laughs> to be honest sorry red hook. thanks red hook yeah yeah, yeah. So that was really cool man it was really nice of the organizers um to i guess to, to trust us to take what was quite a late slot on the main stage mm. um for a band that's you know no, nowhere near the size of Red Bull mm. or Wolf and Carver and whoever was playing after us. So, Cog and all that. So, yeah, it was it was a really cool opportunity. And the stage there is fucking amazing. Yeah, the, the Portu Music Hall is incredible. It's a great venue. I'm yet to see a gig there because I was there for Queensland Music Awards right before right. lockdown last year. Um, yeah, and so technically, I did see music play because I saw um, Jaguar Jones and a few other bands play, but. Still yet to go to a proper proper gig there. I just know how big mm. the actual bloody venue is, and it's incredible. So that walking on that stage and having like a pretty decent sized crowd there, because so I saw the photos. Yeah, After was, all the crap that we've all gone through, how was that? It was fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was pretty funny because we we like rehearsed and rehearsed like this thirty minute set that we had, and then we. Yeah, when we got moved up, they're like, "Yeah, okay, boys, you're gonna be playing for 40 minutes now." Boom! Like, oh, fuck, what are gonna do for that? So three yeah. songs um, for you guys. That's sick. Yeah, it was um, <laughs> four songs. That was a difficult thing. <laughs> four, four songs was like exactly 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And then none of our songs were the right length that we could add more than one to get to 40. Does that oh, makes sense. Like, yeah. All six was long, so we couldn't add two, but one wasn't enough. So it was a bit. So then we just added one like six minute song and then tried to add a bit of a jam in the middle, which went okay. Yeah, we're just right. doing interlude. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. a interlude. 
one of the um, what's probably that one scene of the songs. From Final Fantasy where they just start doing uh, fucking acid jazz and shit. In the middle of <laughs> Yeah. And we, for some reason, chose a song that we hadn't practiced. Practice it, so, but it was um, that it was happens. Yeah, it was, wing it, wing it. But um, yeah, it was great to just um, yeah, first time we played on that stage as well. So it was great to get up there and just be in front of people again. And how were you? How were you feeling? Because we were out the back, right? And obviously, had you mentally prepare for a certain thing? You know, mm-hmm. as you know, you you kind of visualize what's going to happen in the gig get changed last minute sweet roll with the punches love it spoke for the opportunity but it means kind of you're a, bit, you're a little bit thrown off um because you go in and you check out the stage you're gonna be playing and you imagine anyway so we're out the back listening to a sucker punch oh yeah right. incredible oh man i love like, those guys yeah, so amazing i've got a funny story to... about them too so i'll come back to that but yeah please um had this huge ridiculous crowd because of course they did they're a sucker punch and everyone loves them mm-hmm. um we were chilling backstage and i don't know about you but that was, although I've been like getting better and better and better at not getting nervous before a gig, that was, <laughs> it's been ages since I felt that like, oh, yeah. fuck, there's a lot of people out there. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to fuck this up. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, it was the first time I've been nervous in a while to actually play a show. Yeah. But that's a good, good thing though. Did you do your nervous little no, wheeze yeah. and shits before you got on stage? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure did. Definitely. Because <laughs> I know... Yeah, so it was good. It, it, yeah, it's it it's a buzz story. to be playing to a crowd like that, particularly after after all that we've gone through. Because I know, because the band, the Barefoot, the band I'm in, <clears throat> the the reggae band, we played Night Quarter. Um, I don't know if you know of Night Quarter on the Sunshine Coast now. Yeah, it's super cool. I played there with uh, another a Sunshine Coast band. It's fucking cool that band. Which which band? Dora Jackson's the name. Oh yeah, I know, I know Kayla. Yeah, oh man, Kayla's such a queen. Huge fan. Do you play with Kayla? Yeah, yeah, that's for years. She she hit me up just before she got that big pineapple set. Yep. a couple of years. Ago. Yep. Um, and you need a band and whatever. So oh, I did not know you played with Kayla. There you go. There we go. How do you know Kayla? Uh, she's a guest on one of the podcasts, and I jam at her dad's studio. And um, yeah. Kayla appears on one of the bands I'm in, Swimsuit Issue. The vocal and does okay. vocals in two of those songs. Yeah, I know, I know Kayla. Cool. Oh, man. <laughs> and Ryan. That's a random connection. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what I was going back with Night Quarter, like Barefoot got up. And we played with Band of Frequencies, and that was the biggest crowd we've played to in over a year. And yeah. I know that feeling that you have because i was in the green room and i was just gone because normally i don't get that nervous with with barefoot gigs yeah normally i just just it, i just turn that off and grab my bass and grab my synth and walk on stage and it's just automatic thing it's pilot autopilot yeah. yeah no i was i was nervous as shit yeah <laughs> well that's how um like because we were prepared to play on the smaller stage i was not feeling nervous at all I was yeah sweet. okay oh this feels different yeah no a good lesson in visualization, maybe. We should have all sat the back, sat at the back, and visualized, well, keep an eye. A good, a good thing is just like the whole, like, um, another barefoot thing we do is basically like a little, you know, like a hug in kind of thing and just go, yeah, we've got each other's backs and let's let's make it this kick yeah. ass. I mean, we have our own thing. I'm not going to give away what we do, but yeah. Oh, it's, tell it's, me what we're doing. No, <laughs> it's, it's nothing <laughs> sus. Don't worry. It's nothing amazing or anything like that. Um, the story about a sucker punch. A sucker punch, yeah. Because I love those guys. Um, it's the. Uh, the thing is Jack, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I was at the QMAs and we we're up on the top, the mezzanine level, because <clears throat> that's where we got our seats. And yep. I was sitting in the front row and there was people watching just as people were coming in. And then I felt people walk behind me and sit down. And I turned around and there's Jack and the guitarist. Uh, Brenton wasn't there. I know the bass player, um, but I th- and just their partners. And we'd played with a sucker punch um, as mules. And so he kind of knew who I was and, and back and forth, right? And one of my favorite songs of theirs is Drones, which is yep. the last single they great. released. It's a fucking great song. However, I'm shit at lyrics. So listening to pronunciation oh, no. of what oh, Jack's no. singing, I actually thought he was saying, send in the clowns, send in the clowns. Oh dear! So I actually <laughs> turned around, and I, it took me a long time to <laughs> actually realise that it was actually sending the drones, sending the drones because the name is the drones. But yeah, no, the name of the song. Yeah, 
But I don't know. This is a sucker punch. You don't know what to expect because they're fucking yeah. random anyway, man. And they're funny as shit. I mean, hell, Jack, Jack filmed himself on acid for one of the film clips. At the Echo. Uh, I don't know that. That's the way you have not. You, dude, you need to see that film clip. That's amazing. It's a classic film clip. Oh, I can't think of it at the top of my head. But yeah, just, just put in a sucker punch I'll and you can it. see him. He's at the Echo. And he yeah, he's cooked. It's classic. <laughs> Awesome. It is a great film clip. Oh, uh, yep. Found it. He is right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm oh, sorry. I got no, It's all right. You watch that afterwards. Anyway, I turned around yeah. to see Jack and I said, hey, man, like, um, I'm yours. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I remember you. I'm having a chat. And I said, look, I love drones. He goes, oh, thanks, dude. I said, well, can I tell you a story? He goes, like, sure. And I said, I'm shit at lyrics. And I've been singing along to the song. And when you sing in, send in the drones, send in the drones, I thought you were saying, send in the clowns, send in the clowns. He pissed himself. And he goes, that's actually more metal than what drones is. So I won't actually want yeah. to use <laughs> Send in the clowns, send in the clowns. Yeah. yeah. Sounds scary. Yeah. Yeah. Very scary. That's... That was a whole thing like two years ago. Oh, those clown, those nothing. stupid clown things. Yeah. I hate clowns, man. Seriously. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is that why you think maybe subconsciously that's why? Because it was like a kind of metal scream or whatever. And you maybe. Were like, oh, but I also, I also, because he does a lot of um, like a political commentary and that sort of stuff. It could have been like the whole like the politics and sending the clowns. I, I don't know where my mind was going with that. I wasn't thinking of actual like clowns being used as attack things. But You, you weren't? Know, no. But there could be clown drones. It, could I, be clown drones. Could be clown drones. Scary. I don't That's know, a, man. Double scary. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, That's Chris's worst nightmare. Oh, <laughs> like Terminator. Terminator. Fucking clown Terminator. drones. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> last time you guys up here were actually, was actually Pridgen Originals, wasn't it? And that was... Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. You, haven't, you haven't played any other sort of... But that was acoustic, though, wasn't it? Ah. Uh, kind of. Sort of. <laughs> you kind of. <laughs> We got there. We didn't really know that it was as chill as it is. Dude, it's hippie central, man. It's very <laughs> chill. <laughs> Much chiller than we expected. So. Yeah, we just yellowed and um Well, we tried. The first the first song or two I was like, Righto fellas, go easy on the overdrive. Mm. You know, we'll see what we can do. Mm. But the more we played, the more people were just kind of getting up and headbanging and jamming out. So That's by cool. the end of the seven, Let's just play. Yeah, people were actually digging it. Heading what what, what slot did you get? It was like a third or a second. Uh, there, were, uh, there were a couple of people before us. So, so you probably last. So. Yeah, it's normally four, and it, I think we might have a second. Yeah, because yeah. uh, generally the rule is, <laughs> if you watch it and go into it enough, that the, the headline band will always everyone will be up, right? And yeah, they, yeah. they normally conserve the energy one because they're not drunk enough yet. Because sorry, you're not supposed to be drinking at the buck, but yeah, um, <laughs> they're not sort of jolly enough yet um yes, right. and it's cooler because most of the time if you're playing pretty originals it will be usually a summertime autumn sort of thing or spring the winter time ones don't really go that well um i mean they haven't had one since covid anyway but it doesn't matter um yeah. but yeah generally the rule is like the the second last band may get a few people up and sort of moving around so yeah. if you if you manage to yeah. do that you're on to a good thing yeah, it, it it was all right, and then it was nice to just be able to relax into it because they're they're difficult songs. Of all the the kind of stuff that I play, Patient Land is by far the hardest stuff to play softly. Yeah, like it just, just doesn't really work. <laughs> you know not I mean? even with really some hot rods, mate. Get some hot rods in there, and you'll be right. Oh God, I fucking hate those. <laughs> <things. Not even laughs> That's the fate of my existence. I remember a gig at the um at the milk factory, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, milk. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tiny, tiny little stage. Yeah. And it wasn't actually me playing. It was I can't remember what, what the band was. Um, but the drummer was doing his thing, ripping in, and the sound guy just walks up to him with a pair of hot rods, like in the middle of the song, and just slams him down on the snare drum. Like, you have to use these, you clown. Yeah. And I was just like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> the decibel <laughs> limits of some of those venues, man. That was the problem. We um we played a place called the Vineyard. Oh, in um, Melbourne. Have you heard of that one? Oh, no. Lord. Do tell. Dude, no. it was an Italian restaurant. <laughs> it was like, 
like legit. A very it progressive not... Italian restaurant from the sound. Yeah, right. Right. Very progressive. <laughs> it was legit. People were sitting down and eating fettuccine. Yeah. And we were setting up our gear. And we were just like, what's going on? <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah, apparently they um they used to have like bands in there a fair bit mm. or something, as, as we were told. Um, but yeah, they had a, it was like a, it was some Fucking ridiculous gross. decibel limit. It's 80, like talking volume. Yeah, yeah, like 80 decibels or something. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was the weirdest show we've ever played. So wow. Our, our, our amps were just on and it was fucking... I you, did... You yeah. got to put or something then, didn't you? I was just very, very gentle. Just No, he just yeah. used, used his hands, basically. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not touching hot yeah, rods. Well, I... We had to do the same thing. Um, we played Barbara in the valley. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that had, like, I know they've increased their sound limit now because they've changed it, yeah. but we played before they had done that. And yeah. there's video footage of us playing, actually, of doing it. And the, if Nick, the old drummer, Mules, he, he had to use hot rods and he was not happy about doing it. Mm-hmm. And even then, like like Zach just said, the, the, the amps were just on. And that yeah. was it. Yeah, it was so bizarre. Such a weird feeling. It's, it's so strange, like... I guess people just have, I don't think people really understand the sort of the way sound works sometimes when they give you a, a decibel limit like that. Like, no, they don't. It's just, hmm. if everyone is playing at the same time, even very, 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 very softly, mm-hmm. it's not it's really doable to keep it. And and then the, the most annoying thing is then when you'll stop playing, this hasn't happened to the patient with people with other shows, you'll stop playing and you'll look at the decibel counter and it's like, basically the same volume because everyone is talking it's a room full of people they're talking so loud yep talking is crazy loud you got a room full of 100 people 150 people all talking it's like insanely loud but mm. then you know you hit the snare drum a little bit too hard the venue manager's like oh what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about you can't hear me over the conversation was that the only venue you played in melbourne surely you played a better venue than that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Played a couple down there I can't did you do bar right open now. in fitzroy no. Where did we play, man? Did you that do Suki so Lounge? Nope. Nope. Keep, keep, keep lifting them off. I'll oh, <laughs> shit. Baja. I think, no. I think Baja's gone now anyway. I think... Um, yeah. I'll see if I can find the tour poster. Um, we played like a... Uh, I, can't, whoa, I can't remember. Victoria. See, I love Melbourne. No. I love oh, playing Melbourne, but at the same time, if you go like down the down Fitzroy and you're basically during the day and you like you're having a day off or something like that during your tour and you're having go to find somewhere to eat or have coffee or have a beer or whatever, and you run into people yeah. and they know that you're not from there, just go, oh, what do you do? And you, go, oh yeah, musician. They just go, oh yeah, like the other twenty thousand yeah. people that are in this strip right now. Yeah, yeah. you and yeah. everybody. Else, yeah. yeah, you kind of feel like you're being special, and all of a sudden it's just like crushed like that, and you just go. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Damn it. I mean, I love Melbourne, yeah. but that, that happens. Um, Nick, you want to know about TikTok? I do want to know about TikTok. <laughs> you want to know about TikTok? I um, know all about TikTok. Okay. Because a, lo- a lot of people have been using... Because your, your music would actually be... If you're using a distributor, particularly a good one. I don't know who you use. Do you use... Like City you use Gyro. Gyro? Yep, same. Yeah. Um, they automatically load it. Your music will be on TikTok. Yeah, cool. Already. Sick. Yeah. I mean, I can't look on my phone right now because I'm using my phone to record this, but um, <clears throat> you'd be able to, when you go to TikTok, when you go to add music, you'd be able to, you put in patient lounge, you should come up. So yeah, cool. basically, if people yeah, are using your works, video, man. using your music in their video, yeah. it doesn't matter what they're doing. That's going to add as a royalty, but like a, like a point yeah. zero yeah. zero one cent. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Enough to pay for like uh, about that much of a string. Um, yeah. I think personally showing playing music on TikTok as in like there's a few bands that do it it's kind of eh the reason why I, I use TikTok one is is because I like a break from the fakeness of Instagram yeah and do you the, feel TikTok is, is, feels more real than Instagram oh it's not real but it's hilarious right <laughs> 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 there's there's a difference. I mean, you don't get as many of these pouty influences that are on there. I mean, there are some great influences on Instagram. I'm not discounting influences at all, but I'm talking about like the Kardashian shit, right? Yeah. If you have Kardashian shit on TikTok, they get roasted. So really? Oh yeah. 
like I know Kylie Jenner's tried to get on there and do stuff, and people just going, "Can you get the fuck off this this app? Seriously, we we don't want you on here." And they just had all these people just going, what "Please, please leave." Yeah, yeah, go back to Instagram where you, where you got twelve million whatever it is followers. Um, where you belong. Where you belong. <laughs> where you belong with the fake shit. <laughs> Uh, what I like about TikTok, apart from the whole Chinese owned shit, which, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, you're going to be spot on. Doesn't matter anyway. Your information's already belonging to them. Um, it's a good way to show a different side of what you guys mm. are. I mean, with say what what I do, I use it for doing stupid shit as well as like jamming with other musicians because you can do these things like duets or stitches, right? So a duet, you can watch what like a, a drummer will be playing a chop. Uh, that's it would be a fifteen second chop or like a sixty second chop, and that's as far as you can go. Be like, that's fucking yeah. cool. And you basically you click on duet or save the video, and then you just play along to it, and then you can save that and upload that as a video and tag them, and the relationship goes from there. It's really cool because sometimes I don't get to jam with people that like say Jamiroquai, which I found someone doing that and I don't have anyone to play Jamiroquai with here. That's so cool. And I fucking love Jamiroquai. And I found this dude playing drums to Jamiroquai. I just went, fuck, oh yes, I'm going to do it with that. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a fun way of developing a different side to showcase your own personality as well. I mean, you could do individual ones and basically put, put in your name and, and then say that you know, I'm in this band, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Right. You could do a band one if you, as a PR person, which I am at the, as well as among other things, yeah. um, if you're going to do it as a band thing, don't put stuff that you're trying to sell. Right. Uh, the, you got to remember that the typical demographic of TikTok viewers will be between the age of 13 to 22, 23 um, right. There are people, the gen uh, millennials, and there are Gen Xs on there as well. But a lot of the users are younger, and they can smell what they're being sold to. And yeah. basically, a lot of the songs that you, like Dance Monkey and Lizzo, so any of the stuff like Lizzo, yeah. yeah, they got famous because of TikTok. Yeah, believe it or not, because TikTok, if people decide to use your song. Or like a challenge or something. Oh, a challenge or just um, uh, it becomes a TikTok meme kind of thing. It's not really a meme, but yeah. it becomes a trending, a viral video on TikTok. And that gets up to like 50,000 and a million views, which they can do. Um, that accounts to spins, which therefore gets to charts. Therefore, hence why Lizzo, uh, even Amy Shark. Amy Shark's fucking on TikTok. Um, Crazy. Yeah, it's it's another another thing that we have to adapt to as musicians, particularly more DIY or indie musicians, because we have to do so mm. many fucking things. If you don't, <laughs> if you're not signed and you don't and you don't have full team, full legit work, management work. team, booking agency, and publicists, full time publicists, not ones you hire for a campaign, but full time publicists and that sort of stuff, we're left to do things on our own, and mm. that means. We have to learn how to do like distro, but also the social media things, but also adapt to the changes that are becoming, that keep coming in social media. It's yeah. fucked, but I mean, it can be fun, and but it also makes you be more creative and think on the fly. But what the thing that pisses me off the most about it is that it takes away from the artistic process of actually doing the thing that we're yeah. supposed to be doing, which is writing and creating music, correct? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That's, um, I think that's something that we get stuck in sometimes as well we put too much effort into trying to do all the right things and trying to do all the right management there things. is no right yeah. thing though man this is this is the yeah. thing i've been yeah. learning like with the release i'm doing now instead of doing a bombardment campaign i'm just doing yeah. drips and drabs i'm just going yeah man yeah here's a bit here here's a bit there here's a bit there here's a bit there and see if it sticks and then follow up it's it's a frustrating thing. And this is why I liked when we went into COVID lockdown. I don't know if you mm. guys did it, but basically my career, musical life went on pause, right? Which stopped the anxiety for like yep. at, at least three months. It just, everything slowed right down because there was not this consistent need to outdo the next person coming up behind you. 
who's going to do yeah, something yeah. different, right? I don't know what you guys. What how did you guys deal with it? Did you did you stop being creative, or were you more creative during the process? It was it was actually we were talking about this just a couple nights ago at a uh, Q Music thing. Um, it took us probably like a month or so to adjust mm. and work out what's going on. Mm. But then once we did, it was it was a really great opportunity because we couldn't work mm. to then be like, oh, we you can actually just do band shit all the time now this is great like we actually i think it, we found it made us much more creative um because Good. there was time there was, there was no pressure to do anything else that's it, it was exactly just it's slowed down and yeah. write a song or yeah. work out some weird acoustic cover of a tool song or whatever because you guys released something during basically during covid didn't you like towards the end of it last year yeah we our last single places came out towards the end of the year yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that would have been created during the whole that process yes yeah, so we did all the recordings and stuff the next couple of singles we did all the recording for that over the covid we period did too, actually. yeah yeah. yeah so finished um put all the finding cut final touches on lyrics and stuff and actually got to sit down and rewrite some lyrics for Sick. the next upcoming singles as well um so yeah use the time pretty effectively mm. to be honest uh, uh, before we, uh, we get Sidetrack of there's two questions I want to ask at the TikTok thing. If yep, I can. go for it. The first one mm. is um, related to the duet thing. Yep. Were you all over the sea shanties? No, nah, I fucking hate them. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean? Nah. <laughs> if if Nickelback think it's great enough to do a song as and change the song to a sea shanty thing, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm out. No, nah, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Yeah, Nickelback is when you know you've jumped the shark. <laughs> They're like That's the bar. Dumb. It's like, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry yeah. Nickelback. I mean, they are actually, to their credit, they're actually clever songwriters. They're fucking pretty sick. Um, I'm not a fan, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> if if you know that someone like that has decided to jump on the sea, sea shanty bandwagon, I mean, if Corn decided to do one too, I'd be like, yeah, I'm out completely. This, this is dead. done. You know, don't yeah. don't bother. What's the other question? Oh, whatever. I love them. They're fun <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the other question? Uh, the second question, completely different, yep. much more serious question, is mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> on like using things like TikTok and Instagram and social media mm-hmm. as a, a tool for the band, right? As a yep. PR tool, essentially. The, where, what I struggle with is I kind of view those apps as not a good thing for my productivity in general. Yeah, I want to try and avoid them as much as possible mm-hmm. so that I'm sitting and scrolling through mm-hmm. a bunch of influences and, and doing shit so what i'm struggling to balance and what i know you've struggled with as well is being like okay i need these apps on my phone so that i can because they're a great tool to connect with people who like our music not that's awesome but i also want to delete it off my phone because i hate that whenever i opened up to do a post half an hour later i'm scrolling through some bullshit do you know what i mean yeah you, I guess, they're the key procrastinator procrastinating machine okay. basically yeah it's, how do you how do you use it for what it's useful for but not get sucked into the kind of dark side of the. You're talking to stuff. someone that manages five Instagram accounts, man. <laughs> nice. Um, a lot, of, a lot of productivity. Uh, yeah, it's more to do with. Um, I mean, my wife is way better at it than what I am because she 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 sells vintage and she uses Instagram for that, but she also has a private cool. account, right? Um, yeah. If you're using Instagram per se the main screen the posts right they should be mm. like the like moments caption time professional photographs or at least edited to look like that yep and one a day some people are saying you should be doing three a day fuck that one a day maybe one a day ramp it up to, like maybe one every two or three days and that be enough just make sure that you have an, an engagement right depending on what you want to do stories people actually like me but that's when you're doing stupid shit like people can yep. be like like I, I, one stage i was showing me baking brownies all right, right and listening to some music that i want to listen to particularly mm. during lockdown that sort of shit people like stories because of the fact it shows a more sh- human element to yep. what the artist is like whereas you got the instagram main page and, and facebook as well which show the, like the whole professional sort of side of things it's why I kind of like TikTok because it's a, it's mainly stupid shit, right? Yeah, cool. Um, I mean, I'll be up until half past twelve. Me and, and my wife in bed together, and we'd be sharing each other TikToks basically, and mainly cat ones that are just <laughs> stupid <laughs> because it makes it makes us laugh when we're not thinking about 
what fucking ScoMo said today and, and what's going on <laughs> in the world and uh, the rental crisis and all that kind of crap. We're just sitting there together watching stupid cat videos on TikTok or people doing skits. And if you can utilize that to gain exposure and gain a following in a clever way, fucking do it. Mm. Um, but don't make it the be all and end all. This is one thing I struggle with personally. And just saying so you know, that we're hitting 50 minutes. Um, Jesus yeah. Told you guys quick. Um, yeah. <laughs> one of the things that I struggle with the most is not, using the likes and whatever that come through as a gauge for your actual material that you've put out. Right. Go on. It's, it, it could fuck with your head. It does with me every time. And like, I should be taking a note of my own book right now. My wife will be probably listen to this later and she'll be just going, you should listen to yourself fucking talk. But basically <laughs> you can get addicted to that notification coming up and saying yeah. they've liked this post, right? And then you're constantly checking it. It's the same as when you release something and you've got Spotify for artists and you're checking to see how many streams oh, you got. Right. It fucks with your head. Uh, the thing is, if you do not have a massive PR team behind you, if you are if you don't have someone like Triple J behind you, if you don't have any of this sort of stuff in here, it, they're not, you're not going to get to that level of like 1 million magic streams or anything like that. I mean, mm. you guys are playing a very niche sort of music and I love prog. I'm a massive prog fan, but you got, you're competing with guys like the dregs who are very attractive young dudes with long hair with floppy hats. Hey, what are you trying to say? We're attractive young dudes. Come on, Reese. <laughs> You're not playing the acoustic <laughs> sort of stuff that the dregs do where the chicks just go, ah. Yeah, I mean, no disrespect to the dregs because they're actually very... And by the way, Zane from the dreads, dregs has a massive TikTok following. Really? There yeah, and he posts the most inane shit. Sorry, Zane, but you do. Um, <laughs> he called Bernard Fanning old. He, oh, Jesus. Come on, man. Like, I'm... 42 next week and Bernard's not that much older than me. That's like calling me fucking old. <laughs> Um, it's not the be and end all social media should be just a, a, an extra part of the PR tool that you use. And if it's fun, cool. If it's given, if it's fucking with your head, just give it a miss. Don't give it a miss, but just kick it back a little bit. You still, yeah. unfortunately you still need it. I tried doing without Facebook with one of my bands and unfortunately you couldn't do it because you have to set up events when you're coming yeah. and playing shit and the venues is gone. You need to set up an event, Facebook and it's gone. Yeah. It's it's how we are now. I mean, I come in through growing up in the nineties in bands. None of this shit was there. Yeah. I mean Do you think it was easier or harder? Harder. Then or now? Then. Right. It's music and venues are a lot more accessible now than what they were back then. True. It's so much so. Um we it's it's a double edged sword because there is so much music out there. It's yeah. your music actual like lifespan, unless you are in it for the long haul, like someone like me who's been playing for twenty seven years. Um, it's very quick. Yeah. So you've got this little little space and time where you can utilize that, and once once that time's up, you basically you're playing catch ups. Mm. So. I mean, if you're using music to, as a living, you you have to spread yourself out. I mean, play with other artists, play cover bands, be your own producer, that sort of shit. Yeah, that's was, a kind of pessimistic with... kind of thing, but <laughs> so, um, I think it's definitely true. I can't remember what, what the lady's name anymore. I think she's just from Q Music, um, and she hit it with some statistic, which was something like, um like 90% of people who make a living out of music have a second income. Yep. Because you just have to. I've got so a full-time the job. Is, there you go. There you go. That's the, way, that's the way of it. What we'll do, I'll wrap this up now and we can have a like a, a D&M <laughs> after this because we're, yeah. we're just about to hit 53 minutes. This is the longest one I've done in a long time. So, um, that's a good thing, I think. Yeah. Um, Begda <laughs> is out. It came out last week and it's a sick song. Yeah. 
go down Appreciate the journey, put some headphones on and go down like like I did when Talk's album came out last year and I just put my head hoodie mm. over and I just went, woo, disappeared into it. Go check it yeah. out. Zach and Nick from Patient Lounge, thank you so much for jumping on with this. This has been fun. Yeah. And like I said, Thanks. let's chat after this. So, yep. Everyone else, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this one. Um, I had a lot of fun and I had massive chats with Zach and Nick after the podcast had finished and whew, we went on all sorts of tangents. Anyway, I hope you dug that one. Do check out Begda and the other songs on there. I think they've got other three three singles, I think it was, uh, on Spotify. More coming. Um, and if you can see Patient Lounge live, do so because they are very cool. Thank you for... Um, tuning in as i said uh more podcasts coming of my calendar's filling up again um so keep an eye out for that if you haven't followed or clicked subscribe or whatever like that do so because then you'll be notified thank you for supporting local music live music australian music all sorts of music you guys are legends cheers